This is part three in our series of lectures on section 3.3, and in this lecture we're going to give a particular example of how to make use of the equivalence class theorem. So here's the example we're going to look at. This is a particular relation on the set of real numbers. We say that number x is related to number y, provided the difference is an integer. It's an exercise for you, a very simple exercise for you to show that t is actually an equivalence relation. So what we're going to do here is um, see if we can look in detail at the what the equivalence class theorem says for this particular example. We want to identify what the equivalence classes are and then um, use it to show that we can partition the entire set of real numbers into a disjoint union of equivalence classes. So let's just play around with some of the elements of, of R and see which elements seem to be related to each other. Why is it the case that 5 and a quarter is related to 1 quarter? So here's the definition. We need to take the difference and see if it comes out to be an integer. So 5 and a quarter minus a quarter is 5. That's an integer. And therefore, these two numbers are related. In fact, any two integers are related to each other because when you subtract two integers, you get another integer. Here's another one. Minus 5 and a quarter is related to minus a quarter because the difference is 5, and that's an integer. Minus a quarter is related to three quarters because the difference is one, which is an integer. Um, so it follows by transitivity that minus five and a quarter is related to three quarters. Of course, you could have checked that. Um, you could have easily checked that the difference of that is actually an integer. But what I wanted to point out is that this three quarters lies between zero and one. So in fact, I claim that in general every single real number x is t related to some real number between 0 and 1 and conversely no two distinct real numbers in 0 1 are t related let's do some calculations to see if we can convince ourselves that that's true so let's draw a number line and we'll put a few numbers on it And suppose we give ourselves some real number, say over here, call it x. And then I claim that there's some real number between 0 and 1 that's t-related to that x. Well, what you do is you just simply subtract off 1 from x, and then subtract off 1 again. Then that's going to give you some number here, I'll call it y. And y is t related to x because we got it by subtracting off an integer, and therefore the difference between x and y is an integer. Similarly, if we had started in here with some x value, if we just keep adding um, ones to that, we're going to wind up again in 0, 1. Um, and it will be equivalent to the original one. It will be related to the original one because they differ by, by an integer. And in fact, if we had started at an endpoint like minus 2, um, we can always add an integer to get back to 0. And if we start, say, over here, we can subtract off enough. We don't have to stop at 1. We can go all the way back to 0. And therefore, we can always manage to find something in the left closed right open interval that is related to the original x. So that's the idea of the proof. So now that we've convinced ourselves that this thing has to be true by means of that picture, the um, question now is, can you write down a formal proof that it's actually true? So this is what I want to do next. I want to write a formal proof that every real number x is t-related to some real number in this interval from 0 to 1. And conversely, no two distinct real numbers in that interval are t-related. And here I've just written down at the top of the page um, just to remind you what the relation is. So why don't you put your video on pause and see if you can come up with a formal proof of that fact. Okay, well here's my formal proof. 
um, we start with a real number, x, and we first have to show that there exists an element in this interval that's t related to x. So the key is to make use of this floor function, um, which is the unique integer that's less than or equal to x, but when you add 1 to it, you find yourself strictly bigger than x. Remember we considered this function in an earlier um, exercise and we proved the existence of it using the well-ordering property of the natural numbers. So now all you have to do is choose y to be x minus the floor of x, then by definition that lies in this interval, and just by uh, bringing these guys over to the opposite side you see that x minus y is the floor of x and that's an integer. So that proves that given this x we can always find another real number in this interval such that the difference with x is an integer and that proves that it is t related to the original x. So that proves the first part of the result. Now we just simply have to prove that if we give ourselves two distinct elements of 0, 1, that they can't possibly be t-related. Okay, so let's let x and y be two elements of 0, 1, different from each other. Well then, the distance between them has to be strictly positive, because they're different from each other, and strictly less than 1, um, because they both lie in this interval. And since there are no in integers between 0 and 1, uh, it's impossible for x minus y to be an integer. So it follows that x and y are not t-related, and so that completes the proof. So the content of what we've just finished proving is that if you uh, want to generate all of the distinct equivalence classes, the, this, is what it, an equivalent, this is how we notate the equivalence class of x, if we let x vary over this interval, then that gives us all of the distinct equivalence classes. So what we want to finally do is we want to identify um, more concretely what the equivalence class of x looks like, and then we're going to make use of the equivalence class theorem to partition the entire real line as a disjoint union of distinct equivalence classes. Well, here's the answer. If x is a real number, we know that the set of all y's which are equivalent or which are t-related to x are the set of um, things for which when you subtract off x you get a, an integer. And so the entire equivalence class is obtained by taking the set of things of the form x plus some integer where n varies over the set of all integers. Now, a natural notation for this set here is to just write it as x plus z. So this is purely notational for this set here. It's what we might call the set of all integer translates of the number x. And therefore, if we let that x vary over the interval from 0 to 1, then the set of all of these things gives us all of the distinct equivalence classes, and therefore their union forms a partition of the set of real numbers. So this picture illustrates what we've just done. If you give yourself any particular x between 0 and 1, then I've indicated in red at least part of the equivalence class of x. Uh, it's the set of all uh, integer translates of x. Well then, the equivalence class theorem says that if you take the union of all of these sets as x varies over 0, 1, you get a partition of the entire set of real numbers. So I think that's pretty clear from looking at this picture that's, that that's what you're going to get.